Hi there, this is Marie from Creations Photography and Design. I was working on another tutorial and I got into workspaces and I thought, you know, I've seen a question recently on that at one of the groups. So I thought, let's do a little quick tutorial on workspaces. This workspace that you see here is the default workspace for Photoshop. And this is Photoshop 2021, one version down from the one that came out about the 5th of March. Okay, how do we change our workspace? Well, we can change our workspace in any sorts of ways we want. And if you look at this one, it's got, we've got two panels, a skinny one and a wide one. And this skinny one gives us history and properties. So if I click on properties, there's a flyout menu that lets us change the properties or look at the properties. And if I hit history, there's a flyout menu and you can see, well, I've had well, let's, I'll make this a little bit bigger. And as I hover over the bottom, you can see the double-headed arrow. So you can see what I've done already to make this title page here. There's a lot of stuff there. It's amazing how quick that adds up. There is a limit to how many will show up in here and you can set your limit. We'll go back to the preferences, Photoshop preferences, and one that will be, let's look at file handling. Now here's something you probably want to set. I don't remember what the default is. Image previews, do you want to save them? Do you want to not save them? I save them as a thumbnail. Um, I always, always, always append the file extension. And this little doohickey here lets us save automatically for recovery every so many minutes. I've set mine at 10. You can set it at 15, you can set it in an hour. But what this means to me is I'll never lose more than 10 minutes of work. So save often. Okay. Here we go. If we look at performance, it says history states 50. Now you can, of course, change that to any number of, let's see how far does it go up, up to a thousand. But you're going to use an awful lot of memory and an awful lot of processing power to make that happen. 50 is the default and it works quite well. If you save Command and Control S fairly often, you won't have to worry about that. Okay. So now we have 50 states in our history panel. What's a, and over here we've got colors, we've got swatches. Um, I see a lot of this one on um, tutorials and live broadcast because this is the default setting. We have libraries. This is where you can download images from Adobe Stock, where you can add things that you're going to be working with a lot you may have colors. Let's see, I'm going to go back 
just a little bit. And this is where I keep most of them are in my library. And you notice I have some colors that I have saved. Um, I've got some color themes. Um, let's see, I don't have, I don't think I have any character style, styles saved. No, it doesn't look like it. But all the stuff that you're going to use a lot, you can put into a library and access it fairly easily. Now you can see I've got a whole bunch of different libraries here. And some of these, like these Discover ones, are from um, Adobe. They'll, they'll send stuff to me and ask, do you want this? And this one gives me some colors and an image. And I don't remember it exactly what they were for when I downloaded them, but I'm always looking for resources. So there's just a bunch of different ones. Now I've been using this one, which is school pictures, which is a bunch of school kids. All right, adjustments. Let us add different adjustments. And if you hover, you can see what each of these are. This is not a tutorial on what they do. I'm just showing you the workspaces. And then down here we have our layers. And you can see I've got several and the channels and the paths. You will want layers no matter what you do. Now, how do you change a workspace? Well, we go up here to Windows, Workspace, and let's look at some other workspaces. The one that you may want is the Photography Workspace. It gives us more room, if you will, it gives us more tools. Now here I've got properties in the wide panel. I've also got info. Um, I've got um, libraries and adjustments still, uh, layers, channels, and paths. And uh, in addition to the history, we have some actions. And actions are little automatic things that you can do. And there's a bunch of them that comes standard with Photoshop and some that you can add in. And if you click on the panels, you can load actions. And there's a bunch of them that come with Photoshop that aren't necessarily included in the workspaces. OK, we have our colors again. This time we have brush settings and a list of the brushes. We have the clone stamp here and we have color themes. Color themes generally needs to be hooked up to the internet to work. It lets you change things around and you can change colors and find colors and explore I think the one that's that's kind of interesting is Explore by My Name. And look at all the colors that just come up by my first name. And you can also have themes that you have saved. And here's a bunch of different ones that I've got for one thing or another. And then we have this one, which surprises me, this is an add-on plugin. It used to be available through the resources store, but it is no longer available. So if you don't have it now, you won't get it. So I'm not even going to mention it. Okay, let's look quickly at some other workspaces. Let's look at 3D. 
well, up in front of properties and the 3D objects and the 3D tools that you will need, tool presets. So it changes. Let's look at another one, workspace, motion. Now you'll notice when you're doing motion, this additional panel pops up from the bottom. This is where you can create animations and, and record and, and view and edit videos. Okay, what else do we got? Painting. Oh, well, this shows colors and brushes right up the top as well as our um, layers. Let's see, what's this? This is libraries. So libraries isn't as important in the painting panel, but we do have our tool presets and our clone source and our brush settings and of course our history. And let's look at graphic and web. Oh, we, well, we've got colors and histories well, graphics, they're thinking we're going to do a little bit more with text. And so we have character and paragraph styles right around, make it easy. And we also have glyphs. If a letter has a glyph, and that's like the little tail on a C in the French, this is where you find them. We're having properties, libraries, and layer comps. Now layer comps is when you can show two versions or three versions or four versions of the same workspace or the same file. And a lot of times if you're doing graphic design, you want to show your clients, well, here it is in blue, here it is in green, here it is in an entirely different color space and here it is with the title big. So you can show them different variations. And then our layers panel. Okay. Now you'll also notice on mine, I've got a bunch of other ones. And when I create a workspace, I put the date on it. That lets me know which the, the very latest workspace. And I'll change them from time to time. We can reset them. We can add a new workspace. And that's what you do. You get the workspace looking like you want. You say new workspace. And then you save it. We also have keyboard shortcuts and menus and a bunch of other stuff. So let's do some changing. Now the place where we most likely are going to do some changing is in the window menu. And the window menu lets you add stuff here in the skinny bar. Now what if you don't want the bar skinny? Just double arrow will expand the panel. And whichever one you expand, usually, I'm surprised. Usually when I do that, I see all of them there, but they're just wider. Well, let's look at the windows. Suppose we want to add, we have character panels and glyphs, and we have properties. Suppose I want to add the actions. Suppose I've got an action that does something I want. So we have comes in right like this. I'm going to make it bigger so it's easier. And you grab this top bar and then we can top stick it right in there. And let's look at some of the other windows we might want to Let's see, what does an adjustment panel look like? Have we got this anyplace else? Do we need it? Gosh, I don't see any adjustments on there, so let's 
put it in there. And this one not only gives us adjustments, but it gives us styles. Cool. So you just add stuff wherever you want to add them. Now let's put in one more window. Let's do info. And how did that get clear over there? Boy, I'm not sure I can get to that one. I'll well, just, whoops. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> well, let's try something else. Let's try the Navigator. There we go. Now this Navigator panel shows you where you are in um, where your file is. Now if I were to zoom in and you see now I can move from one place to another in the Navigator. Well, sometimes that's really handy. Command or Control Z takes us back to the zero. And this one might be pretty good up here with, let's put it up with the layer comps and the libraries. So now, and you can just move these all over. Once you do move them all over, however, you will want to save it as your own panel. Now, I am going to go now to the workspace. And my latest one is oh, almost a year old. <laughs> now, you can. Now, I like to keep this docked at, at the left. So it always stays over there. And I can have it two paneled or three paneled. When I'm working on my laptop, I have to have two paneled. But here on with a big monitor, it works. You could also move this over to this side. So you all aren't always having to move to the left to choose your tools. I tried that. And to me, it always seemed awkward because I use mostly keyboard shortcuts. But I wanted to show you that my workspace and now that I've changed it, I want to reset it to where it was before, and it pops back over the way it was. So you may want to design, like Photoshop did, different workshops for different, or workspaces for different things that you do. But they are fluid. You can have them do a lot of different things. Now, this is the way I usually see it is pulling them out like that. Do I need that all the time? No. But when I want to go in and see something, for instance, the clone source panel, if I click just on that panel, it will fly out and I can see what I want to do with it. Same with my swatches or anything else that I want to do. It's all out there ready to go. Thank you so much for watching. You have a great day now.